evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled, our regular special meeting, I guess I should say, for September 26, 2022, at 6 p.m. at the Shoulder House. The evening council and administrators. Uh, Mr. Bridge, if you would call roll, please. Sure, absolutely. Uh, Mayor Lowry? Here. Vice Mayor Grimm? I'm here. Councilwoman Eggleston? Here. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Councilman Bond? Here. Councilman Cook? Yeah. Now we have seven members present. Right, thank you very much. Uh, I totally forgot to ask this ahead of time, so I apologize. Mr. Uh, Lindsay, would you like to do the invocation this evening? Sure. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, thank you for this meeting. Thank you, Lord, for letting us come together and do the city's business, Father. We ask you to, to keep your hands on the uh, military, firefighters, police officers. Keep your hand on the Heritage Flight Festival this weekend, Lord. Let nobody get hurt. No problems to do with that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to adjourn. <laughs> All right. Uh, city manager report nine. Comments from members of the public. That's right. Cool. Thank you. Committee reports none. Resolutions none. Ordinances none. Of business discussions on the following topics. Charter. We'll start off with a charter review. Um, <clears throat> charter review uh, that has been put together by our committee committee over this past year, over this year. So. Um, does anybody have anything they need to go over, uh, start off with? The only, Mr. Mayor, Sir. the only thing I saw was the removal process. I still believe it's in violation of, of uh, the uh, state law or state uh, law, constitution, mm -hmm. and legal uh, precedents. What sex? What number are you under? I was going to say. I was looking for it. It's a uh, removal of a council member. Yeah. Uh, for section four point oh eight, I think is where it's at. Mm -hmm. I had I had the other one up and I had it highlighted. And I just opened up the new one. So. I think it's four dot zero eight C. Who is it? Four dot zero eight C procedure for fortress oh, office, yeah, maybe. See. Right. So what do you uh, what are you saying it needs to be changed? I or? think it needs to be taken out because. Councilors do not have the ability to remove an elected official uh, except for a felony, and then I think the Secretary of State would be doing that, you know. And uh, the, uh, there was another section I was looking at, too, in this area. Let's see if I can find it real quick. And what I'm doing while he's looking is I'm just taking notes um, uh, to as what council members saying what, and then what we can do is maybe have Jake suggest uh, yeah. some legal act, legal language that would be compliant with today's standards. Right. Uh, there was also, uh, I don't see it offhand. Oh, yeah. I should have left the other one open. Something about, uh, uh, I don't remember I'd be in that section, but I don't see it. What it have to do with you, member? Uh, Maybe we can help you out. Miss something, I can't think of the word offhand. Uh, unexcused, unexcused. Uh, no, 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 not that, no. Because okay. uh, it, it leaves the uh, definition of was it council, um, city manager, other member? No, it was in the council, I think. Uh, well, it might be up here under the removal process. Uh, oh. Enga has engaged in misconduct. That misconduct needs to be spelled out, in my opinion. It's a loose word. Yeah, very loose, isn't it? I mean, misconduct can be, uh, I didn't shake hands with the city manager. Right. Or he said hi, and I told him, uh, 
don't talk to me. I mean, you know, it's something as simple as that. So, I, or as, as, that's not exactly the word I was using, simple, but petty is that. Well, that might go in hand with the first one you'd mentioned. If, he's, um, if you're going to talk to Jake about it, maybe see what Jake think would be the better way to spell it out, more or less. Yeah. I mean, does, does any of that make sense to the rest of the council or not? No, I would agree. I had said something to uh, the committee. Uh, I forget who it was that called me back. It might have been in December or January. They uh, asked me if there was anything in the charter that I thought would need, need to be fixed. And this is exactly what I told them. It either needed to be fixed, reworded, make it legal, or we do away with the whole thing. Because, you know, like I said earlier, council does not have the legal authority to remove anybody from council uh, unless there's a felony committed. And not only just committed, but you have to be convicted, convicted of it. And then the secretary of state would remove, would vacate your seat. It, it doesn't fall to council. It never has fell to council. And the, uh, I probably said the same thing a few years ago that this whole section is really, uh, shouldn't even be there. Mr. Mayor. Sir. Since we are a home rule city, would that not uh, trump the state law? In a court of law? Uh, probably not. And, and the case I point to, I'm sorry, Mike, I'm stepping right on your toes. <laughs> the, uh, the councilman down in Riverside a few years ago, council voted to remove him. They did remove him. They vacated his seat. He sued them. They had to pay his lawyer fees. They also wrote him a check for $75,000, and he got his seat back. But there was another neighboring city that did the same thing and, and won that case. And won that case. Oh, really? Who was it? Heber Heights. Mm -hmm. They removed three. Mm -hmm. For doc, conduct on coming. Yeah. Which is what? That's also another loosely term. It is. Yeah. I mean, I don't know the details, but I know that they did do it. Yeah. You can't define every single instance. Right. Yeah, I mean, you'd be in here, all, this thing would yeah. be a thousand feet. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that's my two cents on that section. Well, uh, what is? Well, a, a is, it, is, it a, is it a majority of the vote or is it five of five of the sixteen seven? I thought at one time it was six, but maybe it is was five. I'll have to go back and look at the old chart. Does um? I'm not sure. But that's the only problem that I had with it. Uh, well, not problem, but I'm sorry. So if Jake can come up with something else to, to conform more with, with uh, I think, current law and current uh, legal proceedings. But the one in Huber Heights, I believe, is still going on, so it hasn't really been settled yet. Okay. I think it's still in court over. I mean, it's five votes, but sir, Mr. Braves, this is oh, just still down. No, on this one. Yeah. Paper copy of. I've got a I've got paper copy. We do. If you want to pass that down, this okay. Thank you. Always got you. We we got one. There's a whole packet there for you, sir. <laughs> Mr. Bridge, was there something in here? I was thinking there was something in here that you, I can't remember what it was now. Was there something in here that you had? I, I do, I got some, um, some off memory and then some I started taking notes for how far I've got in with this. Um, but I was gonna let council do their stuff first. Okay. And then yep. um, feel free to uh, have me chime in at any point in time. Yeah. But I do wanna focus on council comments. 
I was looking for something that um, I don't ever remember seeing in here, but. What is it? I can maybe help you out. Something about council being reimbursed for like up to oh. 14. What? Where yeah, I, I saw that. What is was it? In the, is it in the charter or is that in the regular code? So that doesn't sound like it'd be something in the charter. Yeah, it's something in the charter that council can will be reimbursed for something. Yeah, and don't, every night it's weird. I mean, because it says it's been in there since 98, but I don't ever remember seeing it. Yeah. And the charter? Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, it's towards the end. Oh, here we go. Um, it is. What? 4.03. 13.05. D. 13? 13.05 D. So just, I mean, apparently it's been in there. I just don't ever remember seeing that. D. Initial compensation. The initial compensation for first council member <coughs> for council elected under this charter shall be six. Oh, yeah, that, that's been there. Are you saying uh, third? Oh, is it, are you looking at the amended one they sent or are you looking at the current charter? The amended one, and it's, it hasn't changed yet. It hasn't changed. That, that's our compensation, and this one here specifically prefer, refers to the mayor. He gets six hundred dollars a month, which is two hundred dollars more oh, a month than anybody sad. else. Okay. Oh, gotcha. Uh, okay. I was always under the the uh, thought that if the mayor gets two hundred dollars more, then the vice mayor should get at least half of that more. No, but I just then, then everybody else. Yeah, but it says the initial compensation for the first council elected under this charter shall be six hundred dollars per year. Right. Oh, per year. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That needs to be fixed. So it's like a sign-on bonus. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's the way. Well, in the other words, you want your six hundred bucks. No, you get six hundred. No, it's just fourteen hundred. No, we get four a year. <laughs> Yours is fourteen. I mean, yeah. it also says. Well, it says it's initial. It's initial. initial. This is, yeah, this is the what they added. Council elected years mm -hmm. and years and years ago. Yeah, very first when they first established it. Yeah, so, but this says um, this has been done in 1998. Yeah. Amended. You know, they may have. Yeah, they may have for some reason amended it, but it had no impact on what goes on currently. Because you guys have. So we get six hundred bucks. No, you, so it doesn't even. At some end. point in time, there's ordinances out there that change the rate of pay for right. the ordinances. That's why I'm changing the pay for council. That's where you guys are at, where you're at. So at some point in time, since this inception of this council, that's probably what it was. It, it, I don't know. I, I'm not going to speak to that because maybe in '98 they passed an ordinance changing the rate of pay uh, up, and then you would think that the rate of pay would be in there, but I don't. I don't know. But no, because that's done by your ordinance. Mm-hmm. All it says on, on, on pay, if I remember correctly, that if the pay changes, like we've changed the pay tonight and give all, give all it the sales it doesn't go for five hundred dollars more a month for each one mm -hmm. of us. And Mike gets a thousand. It doesn't go into effect until Still. the next mayor or the right. next councilman. It doesn't affect any of us Do you after the next election. So this section here, the initial pay, it's, in my opinion, that should probably just go, that's what I was gonna say, should be struck. Yeah, I don't see any reason for it to be in there. It says go to 403. Oh, hold on. And then it, then it changes the compensation. Council may determine the annual salary. So that was the initial, yeah, and now it's been be determined over here. Right. Okay, okay, okay. So the initial compensation could probably just be removed. I mean, it's just taking up space pretty much. Yeah. Well, what it does is it leads you to 4.03. That's the amended. So then in 1998, they probably amended to add that, the 4.03. Yeah, which but goes I mean, into, you have to get all the way down here to 1305 because you already read 403. Well, you don't know. They could have had it on there to take it off, but the voters could have failed. That's, that's the section dealing with uh, instituting the, uh, the uh, charter. 13. 1305D. Thir if you go back a page to the beginning of section 13. Yeah. Transition and severability positions. Let me find that's what here. that deals with. Getting the uh, charter. It's when it went from mayor form to manager form at that point. Oh, okay. So do we have to leave that in there, you think, or not? I wouldn't. I wouldn't think it would. You want to ask Jake on that one? Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't think it would have to stay. 
I mean, the original, like I said, the last council commission review could have suggested it being taken out, and the voters could have said no. True, true, which true. Which is why it's still here. But we'll have Jake. And it did fail the last time. The charter failed the last time. It did. Gotcha. Well, and they usually, yeah, a lot of them. Most of them failed because people don't understand it. They don't take the time to read it. Okay, we got a note there. And they read this at $600 per year, so they thought that's all you was getting, that the mayor only got 600 bucks a year. They could have read it like that. Mm -hmm. But then it says the, that the, the mayor shall receive an additional compensation of $1,400 a year. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what people would have thought. Yep. Another thing, too, is we don't, it's just my suggestion, like this is a big document, so we don't have to have it all wrapped up tonight. I think we could get a big chunk of it, but mm -hmm. there may be sections that we want to review and, you know, and then come back to it. So yeah. just put that out there. So if we see something, though, we see something tonight, we might have a chance to do it before you guys decide if you actually want to take it forward to the voters or not. You want to go over any of your stuff? Um, yeah, 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 we can. I mean, if you don't want to, that's fine. No, 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 I'm just making sure council's really got taken care of and they got their opinion now. Do you have anything? Oh, okay. Well, okay, we'll let Mr. Cook go. I'm sorry, Mr. Bridge. Oh, you're good. Okay, I mean, the section, no. Uh, oh, where are we at here? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Where you're adding that uh, willingness to accept to the office if elected shall appear in a copy of the petition. What, what section you in, Mr. Hang Taylor? on a minute, I'll be back to it in a second. That's Article uh, Let me refer in. That was a refer. Nine Nominations and Elections. That's eleven. That's that section that caught everybody last time. Nine, nine? Nominations. Article 9. It's Where page you've got 22. to attach a letter, your willingness to accept a nomination, blah, blah, blah. We have to do that now. I think when you go out there and you pick up a petition and pay your oh. money, I, that should be stricken I out. You're talking about the city form. Yeah, city. That, that, I think that needs to go away, too. What paragraph is that in? I'm looking for it here. Article 5, planning. Article, he said Article 9. It's Article 9, it's on the next page after Article 9 starts. Page 23. Yeah, kind of right at the top, I think. So what do you want to remove? Group petitions. Group petitions? It says group petitions shall not be. Each candidate shall file a separate petition. Group petition shall not be used. So that's the... They're talking about the city acceptance form is what he's talking about. Okay, so you want to try to remove the... It's 22 and 23, Mr. Lindsay. It's at the bottom of 22, top of 23. Okay, so this one we want to... I'm going to get Jake involved in this one, just in case it's something in state law. Okay, so Jake... So we want an opinion on if the acceptance of nomination and willing to accept office form that has to be done per our charter. It's at the top of page 24. Top of page 20, 23. 23. Or 23, I'm sorry. The, the first full paragraph, the signature of the candidate and the statement indicating acceptance of the nominee willing. Right. So that one sentence? Yes. Mr. Cook? And it says that elect shall be appeared on each copy of the petition. That's what you're talking about, right? Sir. That that needs to be gone, and because if, like Mr. Cook said, if you go out there and you get your signatures, you sign your form, and turn it into the board of elections. That should be enough evidence that you're willing to take the office, not have to do this other form that the city requires for the charter. Signature of the candidate statement indicating a symptoms of limiting. I don't know of any other city that requires this. No. If I'm not mistaken, nobody else in Clark County requires no. it. Okay, so that's page 23. Okay. Good. Got it. That, that whole section could probably be removed because as far as the elections go, you pull, you pull your uh, petition from the county board of elections and 
I mean, the 25, I guess that that, that would stay, but but the, the uh, signature of candidate statement indicating acceptance of nomination that that form should go. Away. I guess the rest of it would be would be sufficient. Do you agree, Mr. Clerk? All right. Okay. Okay. What did you say else is coming out? Because I just got the signature of the candidate. No, the signature of the candidate. Oh. So I got the. Uh, no, the, the, the first part, I, when I said the whole thing would go up, then I read it. Just leave it there. So just that one just sentence. the signature of the candidate and statement indicating acceptance of the nomination and willingness to accept the office, if elected, shall repair on each copy of the petition. That whole sentence Sentence's should be gone. deleted. So the last one you want to stay in the petition, the petition may be in number. Be in a number of parts, but each shall. Uh, part shall be verified by oath by the circulator. Yes, that, well, that's part of the State that's of part of the uh, petition okay. that you get, so that can stay in there too. Got it. Just that one sentence. That way, it okay. conforms with the election law. Okay, got it. Anything else, Mr. Well, basically, that one sentence she go. I agree mm -hmm. with that. Mr. Bond, anything you need to go? Um, I just had two things. One, this is minor, but there's a couple places where the old. Uh, Website shows up to dot net. I already got that noted. You already got mm -hmm. that. Okay. Yep. Um, and then the other, I didn't know this thing they sent us. It was the attachment at the end. Is that part of it that goes when it? This uh, context for social equality and local. i yeah. I haven't looked at that yet, but I'm assuming that's what they want. And all of that. I, I didn't know if that was something that was going to be attached to that or what that was. was mm -hmm. not the question. I didn't like that either. So I, I don't think that, yeah. I, well, I, just, that's I good, mean, it's current trends of what people are moving for. So I haven't read it yet. And I just, anytime you got social equality is, I mean, it's usually a good thing. That's debatable. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You good? Find out. Do you need water or anything? You good? Okay. <coughs> yeah, I haven't, I honestly, I haven't even got that far in it yet, to be honest with you. I just realized there was an, a social, I just realized there was an attachment when I forwarded it out. Kind of hit the other things that I. Dan? Anything? No. Mm -hmm. The only thing Nothing I have is the preamble. Mm -hmm. And that first line. I, I, I can, I uh, have no problem with being grateful to God for the blessings of liberty. I think we need to remove the Almighty. It sounds. That would not pass. Uh, in fact, quite honestly, if that was taken out, I wouldn't even vote for it. I'd vote no. Well, you still get God, but the Almighty's taken out. He is the Almighty God. In your opinion. In your opinion. That's, that's opinion. opinion. In your opinion. That's opinion. No, <laughs> uh, actually, Christianity's nose dive at an exuberant rate, but that's just my opinion. Yeah. I mean, I think it's. I think leaving God in there, it's there because many people have a lot of different gods. Mm-hmm. And what was changed in here because it says amended March 2022. I don't know. And all those amended dates would have amended to Amended March 2022. That's not accurate. There's no way that we amended anything have in March all, the, uh, all those uh, amended March 22 dates would have to be fixed. As being they may have. It, what is it compared? I printed out the actual current charter. Let me I've see. Did they switch a word in there that they would put that? Because amended in March 2022. It was when they did it. Yeah, when they did it, but then it would be the date of the vote, I'm assuming. Well, this is a preamble. What am I doing? Be brave, will almighty God. Blessing the liberty with the people of this town. Now, they removed the, the word municipality. So it says, we the people of the city of New Carlisle, says, we the people of the municipality. It says municipality in the original, so they took out municipality and changed it to new city. That's the first thing you see. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's different because it, on the new one it says under the constitutional laws, whereas on the preamble here it says in order to execute, secure an exercise. So there is some difference on that preamble. Hmm. I don't know what the is. Well, anything that's on, on anything that they have suggesting, they're getting from the um, recommended charter right. that yeah, the, they put out that all cities yep. should follow. So it's not like they're coming like up us on their own. All these are just yeah. recommendations based off the current. 
For the one time the environment. Don came and talked about it. He, he mentioned that. Don who? Hall. Don Hall. Didn't you say Don King? No, I did not. I swear I said Don, Don King. King. <laughs> oh, Don King. Oh, Don King. Okay. Oh, Don King. That's what you said. Did you thought I said Don King? I didn't even hear it. I just heard Don. But that was a good catch by Peggy. He, he had mentioned King. that. Uh, yeah. The Don King. He just talked about it. Yeah. I think he gave us all about that. Mm -hmm. It's like almost in my pile. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, Peggy, if. Uh, I mean, what do you guys feel on? Yes. I know what Mr. Lindsay thinks. I don't mind it either way. I mean, I've got my own versions and beliefs and what God, who, what, when, where, and why. It's, either way, it doesn't bother me. She didn't say remove God. She thought about removing the Almighty. <clears throat> I think Almighty God should be left in there myself. Okay. I, no. I think the I mean, I, I personally think the whole thing should be removed, but Almighty would be suffice. Mr. Cook? I have no problem either way. Yeah. So, one, two. I think um, as the city continues and tries to grow, you're going to start to bring in more people who have different beliefs, and having something like that in the beginning of your charter is going to attempt to eliminate or discriminate against others, those willing to step forth and be part of this growing city. Um, I have nothing against people who have those beliefs, but I also don't think that uh, we should be limited to those who have only that belief. Yeah, I mean, because there's obviously there's multiple beliefs out there. Can I make a suggestion? And, I don't want to step or set my boundaries. And, and all of their, uh, all the different religions and beliefs, I'm sure if you ask any of them, they, they believe that is their God, and they also believe that their God is Almighty God in their religion or in their beliefs. What about so, those who don't have a religion or a belief? Well, then it doesn't even apply to them. But it says, we the people. So yeah. when you read it, it says, be grateful to the Almighty God for the blessings of the liberty. We the people of the city of New Carlisle. Yeah, you're yeah. speaking yeah. for yeah. everybody. You're speaking. the laws of the state of Ohio. Yeah. You're finished the sentence, not but, this part. But what it's doing well, that is, is the, second part, the, the second part has nothing to do with But if they have, have we the people of the city of New Carlisle being grateful to Almighty God, You'd have a point, I'd have a problem with it. This is what I'm suggesting. But that isn't what it says. Again, I, I, this is, uh, you're reading into it, and what I'm suggesting is, since it says we the people, such a hot button topic, let your voters decide. Yeah, they'll either vote for it or they won't. Yeah, for sure. And more than likely, it'll be voted down because people oh, will take time to read it. It'll and it won't be just because of that word. Mm -hmm. It'll be because they don't understand it. Hey, let me go. Let me catch Mr. Grimm up. So, Ms. Eggleston, right up. Go get him, Randy. Uh, there's, there's a good point. Yeah, go get him. Uh, Ms. Eggleston, right up under the, okay. under the preamble where You're it sure says, uh, being grateful to. I mean, the little kid. Hang on, guys. No. To be grateful to. Almighty God. She said she don't have a problem with God. She thought possibly Almighty should come out. Okay. Um, some council members agree, some don't. Strongly disagree. Okay. So, um, I would say it sounds like, Peg, that it would just have to be decided, like Mr. Bridge said, to the voters, because I don't think you would have it either way. It would be probably a tie. Or real close to it. To support it. Well, yeah. So, Got a note. Uh, Peggy had brought removal. I mean, everybody's beliefs are different. Okay. All so, right. so anything else, Mr. Eggleston? Mr. I, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Cook. Section 102, boundaries. It says, shall have the power and authority to change its boundaries and to annex. Then further down, it states that no territory shall be dis detached from the city without the consent of the majority of the electors. To me, that's, I guess, a little wishy-washy. 
No, what that means is... If we, we talked about this in one of the meetings about... Go ahead. You're going to say... Like, that says, like, all right, so we have the city currently. And let's just say we wanted to get rid of the cemetery land. We wanted to de-annex that, detach it. That would have to be voted on. So it's opposite of annexing. Like, if you want to detach, your citizens has to vote on that detachment. It says no territory shall be detached. Think of detached as removed uh, or de-annexed from the city of New Carlisle, nor shall the corporate existence of the municipality be terminated. So that's to say, if you guys wanted, all, you wanted to forgo your city status and be part of Bethel Township again, that would have to be voted on by your thing. So basically what that's saying is council doesn't have the sole authority to make your city limits smaller. That's how I interpret that. If you'd like for me to get an interpretation through Jake, I more than welcome can. I'm, I'm reading it that the city council has the authority to do it either way. Mm -hmm. Then we're telling them that the electors have to get involved. I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's not how I took it at mm -hmm. all. Mm -hmm. I, I, I take it as uh, we can all annex, but if you want to get rid of it, it takes um, the electors. And I can give an analogy. So when you own two half of two pieces of land, you can lot combo with a simple paper. Mm -hmm. To lot split, you have to go through the planning, planning board to do a lot split. So it's a little more effort to remove than it is to come together. It's kind of like marriage. <laughs> yeah. No, marriage is easy. Perhaps we ch uh, change, no authority to change, we no authority to what, decrease? And detach is, I think, the word that yeah. should be in place because it, when you. I'm talking and, about the second, oh, I'm sorry. The second line. The city of New Carlisle shall have the same boundaries as now exist, but with the power and authority to change its boundaries. And to annex other maybe, territory maybe, con contingents. Maybe it would change, change the boundaries there to maybe reduce the boundaries. So. Or alter it? Well, altering would. Would also be uh, change annex. Yeah, but they're talking about annexing and changing the boundaries on that line there. Right. And then the second line says, "No territory can be detached from the city of New Carlisle, like the cemetery. If we want to get rid of it without the voters approving." Well, detaching we, it would be changing it. But we can't do that as a council. We can't right. get rid of property as a council. The electors can. But some, somebody could come along with a lawyer that needs money, and if we were to sell, sell the cemetery, they could uh, use that as a... So do you want, you want Mr. Bridge to have uh, Jake take a look at that one? Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't catch anything because I was in my own head trying to think about how I do this. Section 1.02. I got you on that. Boundary. So what is the concerns? Because to me it reads perfectly. Yeah, it does make sense. City of New Carlisle shall have the same boundaries as now exist, but with the power and authority to change the boundaries. Mm -hmm. Change its boundaries, yeah. Change would also mean decrease. Yeah, I think that's what a hiccup is. Change doesn't mean this. It means in this particular case, in this particular use of the word change, it is to either increase or decrease. You, that's the only thing you can do when you change the boundaries. Right. So, so I think in the, the context of the ends, when you change its boundaries. We don't that, have the authority to decrease the boundaries. But it says that in the second it, sentence. It but if you're changing it, but the boundaries, be it adding or deleting. I see what he's saying now, but with the power and authority to change its boundaries. I guess I'm, I, like I don't see any difference here. Well, they, okay, so there, there, let me take it back. Look at the qualifying, the thing that first started. It doesn't say councils. It says the city of New Carlisle has authority to change its boundaries, whether that be through a council measure, through right. annexation, or through your citizens, through the vote of right. detaching. So if that said the council, then I could see it. But since it says the city of New Carlisle, that's encompassing well, the Well, then you could go further and say yeah. the city uh, can annex other territory. That means all annexations would have to go to a public vote. Mm -mm. Cause it, no, because the qualifying sentence that says if you detach, it has the to go to the city of New Carlisle has the power to annex other territory. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be in that context. Of to cover the uh, residents in the first one to change its boundaries, you would also have to use in the second one to annex other territory. I don't, I, I don't agree with you. I don't, because it says if you annex, that gives you one set of power to change your boundaries. 
and that's gifted through council. Then you have the other way to change a boundary, which is through detachment, and that sentence is covered through the detachment sentence, which it says, no terrace shall be detached, blah, 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 without consent of count, without consent of the voters. I'd like to hear what Jay has to say that. This is supposed to be on do not disturb, by the way. Can you have Jake look at that? Oh, for sure, yeah. Just just see what he thinks. Mm -hmm. Anything else, Mr. Green? Nope. No, I think I'll move with you're going to quit. quit. It's, it's you not entering, you're not allowed to. Yeah, you can't quit per <laughs> section. You have, you have to commit a felony and be convicted. Yeah. <laughs> what? It says 630. Oh. Yeah, but we have the updated version that says 6. All right. So we're going to have Jake look into that? Yeah, just have Jake. Just for clarity? Can, for, yeah, clarify. Clarity? Mm -hmm. Okay. If Jake has any questions about that, do you mind if I have him call you so you can discuss it with him directly? In my current condition, I'm not doing it. I'm not <laughs> okay, I got you. I, I'll remember okay. what you said. I'm not going within 100 feet of a bathroom. All right. Anyone else before we hand it to Mr. Bridge? No, I'm still making notes, I remember. All right. Well, when you're done with your notes, you can go over what you need. You remember all that, so when I ask you, you remember what we was going on. Okay. And yet, it still isn't on the side. Okay. Well, she got through the do not disturb, so I didn't know it was an emergency or not, so I just wanted to make sure everything was good. Okay, so I got through about a few pages of this. It's a, it's a very interesting read. Um, so I started going through and kind of highlighting what's been changed, what's been not. So I'm going to finish that out for you guys, and I'll email it to you. Um, under 4.07 prohibitions, I think, and I haven't looked at this yet, um, nepotism, not that we've had any problems with it in the past, uh, but I think nepotism should be addressed somewhere that you can't have a family member on the same council um, as it was in the past. Like it, We've never had problems with it. Um, another thing is, too, is City of Vandalia is once council, once you got put on council, the, we cannot do business with you. We had went through that with Mr. Bond, we got the legal opinion. Um, about that particular issue. Um, so I think it'd be in council's best interest to kind of look at that section to uh, beef that up a bit. If council's in, interested in the nepotism, um, we also have that on boards too. We have a husband and wife on our planning board. Um, so those things are generally frowned upon in today's age and are not really good practices. We just don't have anything to prohibit it at this point in time. So food for thought, that's one of my opinions. Um, Mr. Mayor. You, you, you want to finish I first? This section that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Nepotism. I would not have a problem with that. It, uh, like you said, in today's world, that is very frowned upon, and a lot of people would question the legalities of it. Although they don't have the money to get, take it on legally. So uh, I would be in favor of adding nepotism to it. And I forget the other part that you was talking about. Uh, the, when council members get elected or planning board people, we just don't do business with you. City doesn't do business with you to avoid any kind of uh, Conflict, ethic, com okay. uh, conflicts. Isn't there a... I don't know what conflict that would be. I mean... Um, I'll give you one right off the bat. Give me an example. We have a, a, a Mr. Bond owns a, a mower repair yeah. place. We should not buy a mower from him. We have a legal opinion stated. We should go elsewhere and get that mower. Okay. So that's it's what it's talking about, oh, okay. stuff like that, like direct. Now I can get Vandalia's for you guys because they passed it something similar. I don't think a $5,000 mower we don't buy is going to break you, so. Mm. Isn't there a, a provision unless the merchant can prove that he has low, the lower price? Mm-mm, basically if it's not in the area. Yeah. Okay. If I remember correctly. I'm pretty sure I saw that. There's four bullet points you mm -hmm. have to meet in the ethics thing, and all four are very, very hard to meet, and I try, you know, we mm -hmm. all try to look at various angles at it. And again, it's just not good practices. Yeah. It's just not. So the city yeah. is not currently doing business? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead, Mr. Bridge. Yeah, that, that, that's cost the city. Mm -mm. So where are we at with that? What does council want to do with the nepotism and the 
I, I don't have a problem with nepotism being put in there. Okay. Do you want me to submit you the legislation, Van Doe, you did so you can look at that council's okay. business? Yeah. Do you think that should go in here? The, the only thing on the nepotism thing mm -hmm. is there something to be said for, because it's an elected position and the voters would decide, you know, if, if a husband and wife want to run for council and the voters decide whether they want to put a husband and wife on council, but maybe nepotism belongs in the appointed position where, you know, if there's a vacancy and council can't appoint a, mm -hmm. I don't know, I'm just thinking mm -hmm. as far as allowing voters to decide if they want relatives on council, but put council your glass. can't decide. Did you just put your glasses in half? Yeah, they bring, yeah. Oh, that's cool, I've never seen that. Um, I agree with you to that point. However, there will be in a small city like this a chance where you have four openings on a council and then maybe two people are running. And those two people are husband and wife. Father and son. Father and son. And then people get a hold of that and they know that and they say, oh, we can derail it. We, and, and we, on your planning board, you have a husband and wife. On your parks and rec board, you have a mother, mother and a mother daughter and on a three-person board. Right. You know, so those are the type of things. And you know what? Like I said, we've never had an issue with it that I've seen. But it does give that person a clear advantage, especially when you're on a three-panel situation, okay. yeah. you know? So it's just, you know, it's always been a topic of conversation in the back door here. Uh, so just thought I'd bring it up. All points up to you guys. Oh, yeah, send it out. So, so the question I would have that if, if that goes in here and the charter is, is passed by the electorate, then would those two fractions right now would have to be corrected, or would it take probably the next cycle? Yeah, and let's just say that, well, I'll have Jake look at. I'll probably bring some of you guys because let's just say we we're going to have to really sit down and talk about this more and break it out more because I elected officials appointed one thing, but let's just say that we have an employee of the city that doesn't create any issues. You know, so are like if April, are we allowed to hire April? Or let's just say someone else is significant other child wants to work for the city. You know, how does that come to play? So I think there should be carve outs for that nepotism, but I also think it should be addressed in certain functions of the city. Since I don't think my personal opinion is with April, there is no nepotism because she he is not her direct supervisor. You are whoever it is. How it is. I don't have I So, but but with that said, when when the pool when the she comes and wants money from us, then her husband's on the board, and naturally he's going to vote yes in the mind of the public. So to avoid to avoid any. Uh, I guess backlash for lack of a better word mm -hmm. when it comes to the pool and we're voting on things for the pool, maybe her husband would abstain from it and not have a vote. Yes, I mean, I mean he has that option now. He, he does, and he, he would be required to abstain. Let's just see, he can vote on the general pool overall right. budget. Let's just say, though, that Mrs. Lowry wanted a raise. And that had to go through you guys. Was it, he but, he could not. He would be in his best interest and best interest of the city to abstain from that. But the, but yeah. the overall pool budget, where you're yeah. talking about repairs and maintenance, all that, he can vote on that all day long. Well, and he has been. I yeah, had five sure. minutes. So yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. because but you're right. If she wanted to raise, actually, that would be up to you or him, whoever she answers to. You know, and ultimately you, I think, sure. if she got a raise. But then we would have to approve the raise because you would bring it to us or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. I mean, I she think, wouldn't come in here and say, Council, I want a raise, and y'all need to give me one. No, she would. Because if she did, there'd be seven people up there laughing at her. <laughs> well, maybe not Mike. <laughs> yeah. So I just wanted to bring it up for discussion. And what we can do is, like I said, we'll probably have another work session before it gets final. And I'll start looking at maybe how other cities have this set up that we can maybe use for examples. Okay. Uh, Mr. Let me Cook, that. I believe in previous charter reviews, this issue has came up, and I believe previous law directors told us to stay away from it due to the fact that we would be infringing upon an individual's rights. Mm -mm. Right. And oh. consequently, it could open the city up for some legalities. 
Yeah. Well, Jake, look at it because a lot of people have this in there in their rules and regulations about nepotism. I, I, I think we're so, on very hollowed ground. Well, again, we'll have Jake look at it because it's definitely in other places. I've seen it. Yeah. I've seen it before. Yeah. <coughs> For sure. Yeah. All right. So, what else, yeah. Mr. Bridge? Um, do, 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 do. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. 4.12 procedures, and it says rules of council, it's page six, by the way. So special meetings may be held on the call of the mayor or four more members and whenever practical, no less 12 hours. Is it in the rules of council somewhere that the city manager also has the authority to call special meetings? I thought we put that in yes, there. Yeah, it is, okay. So in this particular case, the charter would prevail, so that would have to be removed out of, is it? out of the rules of council or the city manager's got to be named in the charter if it conflicts and i got notice to check that where are you at 4.12 page six last pair last thing on the page rules well, of council should be highlighted okay. the, the, the way i read this and what you said if you wanted a special council meeting for whatever you would contact the mayor whoever the mayor is currently, mm -hmm. Mike, and tell him why you want it. Well, I don't care about that. I just need to make sure it's not conflicting with the rules of council. That's right. it. But yeah, you can call a meeting. Mm -hmm. According to the rules of council, but not the chart. Right, so just change it either way. I mean, we yeah. either leave it and take it up well. Honestly, I mean, if it's, if it's conflicting, I think it should be out. I don't think the city manager should be able to call special meetings of council. Okay. Yeah. I think, emer I think we put in for emergency meetings. Maybe in the rules of council. Now I'm thinking about this out loud, maybe it was emergency meetings. It's still emergency meetings, you can call them very You only said you have to have one meeting a month. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. So, okay. Okay. Yeah, great. Let's, let's I mean, get that, that down. Yeah, yeah it sure does. So then, so then maybe at the next council meeting, more yeah. notes for you. No, it's fine. Like I said, I got, I got, I'll... Have that brought up, we'll change the rules of council. I'll, yeah, I'll look at the rules we all of council. Know maybe under um, this emergency meetings. It'll go back to, uh, yeah. Um, under 4.13, action requiring an ordinance, page seven. Um, in my cross-reference, I noticed that they left H1 and two out, which I think probably need to be put back in. And that is? They left what out? Uh, H1 and H2. Which are? Um, H1 is, and so it's H first off, under action required ordinance says, Levy, taxes, and or assessments authorized by voter action, constitution, or all, how law, subject to the following. And subject to the following has been left out of what they recommend to change. And what they say is one, the municipal income tax rate shall be one half percent and shall not be increased without majority of those voting at an election approving such increase. So that should go back in because your voters have to approve your yeah. income tax increases. And H2 is assessments for curbs, gutters, and sidewalks shall proceed by an adequate and reasonable notice to affected property owners. However, council may, by two-thirds majority vote, suspend the notice requirement in order to meet unusual, unanticipated, or unforeseen circumstances. So that needs to go back in, too. We always have the power to assess through curbs, but let's just say it's an emergency measure. You guys can sit there and waive that notification period by two-thirds of a vote. But H says... Levy taxes and or assessments authorized by voter action. So what that's saying is that the voters has to vote on everything, correct? Is my understanding that correct? Levy taxes and or assessments right. authorized by voter action. Voters have to approve, approve that. Yeah, they do, but it's not spelled out. So, so I agree the other two should probably go back in. Mm -hmm. Or at least the one about the income tax. And the voter action, this ordinance. Subject to the following. Yeah, so you'll have a law covers your curbs if you are sea level and that yeah, yeah, but, you back in there. Yeah. yeah, but you don't know if this I haven't yeah, no. what's the constitution may not say that council may be two thirds right. of those suspended. Right. It may so just say you they, yeah, you may just say you you can assess for curbs. I agree with you. Nope. Yeah. So that's where I'm at. So I'll have Jake look at it, but I think it should go back in. We good with that one? Yeah. Uh four point one seven. It's all, 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 all the authentication, recording, codification, and printing, page nine, where that be. Um, and it says, within four years after adoption of this charter, and at least every 10 years thereafter, council shall provide the preparation of general codification of all ordinances and resolutions. What that means is we submit the paperwork to have our big book updated. 
10 years in today's age is very long, <laughs> very long. Um, so I think that should be adjusted. I think it should be at least every five years. If you want to be real strict, at least every year. Um, because I do it every year, um, if the budget allows, to be honest with you. Um, we haven't had that issue in the past because the budget do it much better. But we change, anytime we change aspects of our planning and zoning code, anything that is pertinent to that, that is needed, Sometimes we'll get someone submit a permit based off our current codes because it's not updated, and then boom, they have to redo, redo the process. So again, I do it every 10 years, but I don't know what your next manager would do. He may stick to that every 10 years, and it's going to be one very costly when you do it after 10 years. Yeah. So that's another thing you gotta look at, the pacing of how much it's gonna cost. So something five or less would be more than adequate, and I think it should be three or less. Three. Go three. Mm -hmm. I'm fine with whatever yeah, you recommend. That would be, three years would be an awful lot to update. It would, I think probably I mean, about every two, at least every two years yeah. or something. He's doing it every year now, yeah. correct? Mm -hmm. That's what you said? Well, so I, I would say stick with the, the <laughs> one year and then within the four years, I would say within six months, because it's updated anyways, correct? Yeah. So six I, months would make a difference. I want, we budget around, I think, eight or 9,000 a year for codification updates. That's how much it is. Wow, I would hate to have to pay. That would be uh, 16, 20, 24,000 if you did it. What, what do you want, one or two? Yeah. Two is suffice. Two? Mm -hmm. Two. Okay. Good. Good. What about the four year thing? You want to change it or not? No, it's, it's already off. Already adopted. Yeah. Okay. Every two years. I mean, by this stuff being up to date in the code, when they go online and look, it, it, it helps them to know what the current codes are, and they don't have to redo the paperwork if they're following the code that's out there, and we've changed it, and the council has changed it. Randy, do you want to continue on this topic, or do you want to stop where we are and move on to our next topic? No, that's up to you guys. We well, can I mean, pick back up. We'll have to come back anyway to finish. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We, uh, can I just, can I, can we end on one? Yeah, go, note? yeah. On page 11. And we're going to go to I, and I'd like that removed immediately. And it says, under city managers for duties, provide support staff services to the mayor and council. Oh, yes. We need, no. We need to leave that in there. No, I got nothing to do. That's why you have a clerk of council. Hey, oh, wait. Now, which one? I? I that it says, keep the city. Page 11. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Keep the city fully advised. Huh? Keep the city council fully advised as to the financial condition. Okay, maybe I'm not. The city. I? Oh, J, K, L. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> provide staff He's support services. He doesn't want to provide staff or services. We can have a staff? I would like staff. <laughs> you have a, yeah, you do. It's called clerk of council. Correct. That's what that's for. Yeah, there's four. Or according, just or according to this, it's also the manager. I do this anyway. I just thought it was funny. I got added. Yeah. I was just trying to be funny with it. I don't care if it stays or not. I do it anyway. All right. Yeah, we can move on. We're we're, we're section. We we're. I guess we're not going in any order, are we? Yeah, because there's no rush to get through it. Really. No, I mean, there is, not, but not a big. No, no rush. Are we? We got two other topics to get through. So we ended on. I ended on. Page 11. 926. Okay, let me get this out of the way here. Other than that, I think they did a really good job, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Minus some of the stuff that I haven't seen yet, but. Oh, Lord. Okay, so uh, retreat, this will be really quickly. I just, I need some more guidance from you guys as far as, I know we had discussed it a month ago, well, not a month ago, quite a few months ago. Want to know that we are still on the same page before I start really getting into this. Um, so when we talked about it before, it was we were going to do it around budget time or we were going to do it after the first of the year when new council members got set. So I need to know if we're still sticking on that motif for the after the first of the year, council members are set. So yes. yes. Yeah, I would assume yes. After the first of the year. So we're saying that, do we mean February? Do we need March? Does anyone have any dates that they are not available current council that's going to be here next year. When I, when I go to these event venues, I just can't say, do you have any availability? I got to have right. solid dates. I mean, I'm not good at all. I would say the, the, the further we got away from January, got into the harder it's going to be. 
because you know obviously spring things yeah. starts things start no, was, in the warm February March this is where I was at with yeah, yeah. yeah. So February would probably be awesome. okay right now we have five thousand dollars budgeted for the council retreat how much five thousand for this year okay when we develop the budget for next year we just put the five thousand dollars over again because the, clearly this year is not going to be used do you guys want to add some more money to that because we don't know where we're going to end up. We don't know the pricing yet. I got miles of reimbursement we're going to have to do. We have to feed everyone. Like that 5000 could be ate up pretty quick. How long are you planning on this retreat being? I don't know. That's, that's, this is not my retreat. This is you guys to get and say this is what you're going to do. going to be a week or just that's a weekend? Usually, no, they're usually around two or three days. If are we really bringing in a facilitator or are we doing this ourselves? That's another thing, too, that's going to go into your budget. You know, this is going to be the important part of your monies. Mm -hmm. Your facilitator is going to cost you some bucks. Yep. Then if you go off to another site and you're going to spend the whole day, you're going to eat, you're going to, your money is going to go up. If we were to have it here with the facilitator, half-day sessions, you, you've got many options. I'd say bump it up five or ten just to cover your bases. Put it at fifteen. Well, I, I think you're going to need a facilitator in order mm -hmm. to keep this thing rolling yep. and keep you on track. Now, another good thing with the facilitator is I would like to get someone in here that knows our former government that can really, because like I said, I could be doing things wrong. I mean, just to get that guy who has 30 years experience in there to say, this is the best practices, this is how you need to do it. Um, that is probably going to be the bulk of your money, to get a consultant in here. Now, is it one day, it needs to be more than one, because I think Two. if you really break it down, maybe that consultant, the consultant I think should be day one. That's going to lay our groundwork down, understand our form of government better. Then in kind of my head, I had it like, okay, um, we should also bring in your administrators, me, Howie, and Colleen. You guys, we need to sit down, make sure that we're operating the way that you guys want us to operate. We have to look at our big policy plans. Our job is done by your codified ordinances. That's how we do our job um, and our own vision and stuff like that too. But to give you a chance to talk with me and your uh, higher ups, um, I think it'd be a good time too to get the new elected council members in here to understand your documents. There's a lot of things as elected officials up there that people just don't know or don't know exist, whether it be our comp plan, whether it be the charter itself, whether it be the rules of council, whether it be sunshine law training. You know, there's a lot of things that these new people who have zero experience doing this need to understand what their roles are. Um, but we'll have the same council then as we do now. Well, great. Then maybe you guys do it in 24. Yeah. I mean, that portion of it. And the next year you have it. I'm just saying it has to be every year that you get new council. You don't have a council member. Clearly, you're not going to review that stuff. I've been in the 101 building, but is there a room there? Not big enough. No. Historically speaking, governments go away. Yes. Well, I know that, but we're pretty small and mm -hmm. spend a lot of money on it. Well, and this, come on, man. This is our trip to Vegas. I mean, if we're going to big. Then I'm already going to Vegas. I like, Fairborne Fair, go Fair okay. went down to northern Kentucky. You know, I'm not saying we have to go to Columbus or anything. Tahiti. I'm not saying any of that. Heck, we could, we could rent a conference room out of a, a hotel in Dayton or something, yeah. just a conference room or whatever. I'm going. Yeah, like Beaver Creek. I mean, there's a nice yeah. Yeah. garden yeah. in there. Down there but. If you guys wanted to keep it local, I could reach out to Fab Metals and see if they'll let us have that second floor. You know, That's nicer than any hotel I've been in. You know, but then, too, you know, you got to, if you, I'll be honest with you, like, it would be open to the public. So yes. if you guys want a lot of your public there, if it's close, you're going to have a lot. Now let's yeah. take it you to know? Tennessee then. <laughs> I mean, I mean, let's, we can't get people to show up here. If we take it to Beaver Creek, they definitely can show yeah, up. Right. Well, they might for that particular one or two days. But, I mean, where you guys go, location is, what it is, I don't see us going far away. No, I don't see that. It's going to be logistically easier for everyone uh, if we keep it kind of somewhat local. Um, All right, what do you want to up the budget to? Just I mean, because obviously if we don't spend it, it's, it just goes the, back in the pot. The facilitator is going to cost probably ten or 15000 for two days? I don't know. I would say just for a day. I, I, I would it. say that before you can answer that, you're going to have to, to get some numbers on a facilitator. Shop around. Yeah. And, and like he say, it, it could run in several thousand dollars yeah. They're not cheap. for that person. If you're going to have 
a four-hour session, an eight-hour session, two four-hour sessions, you're going to have to put some budget together before you talk about increasing the budget. Okay, I got 5000 to work with now. Let's do that. So we were first off, the budget's coming to you guys, I think, October 24th for your first review. So I am going to throw some more money into it. And then, because that way I can do a little bit more research between now and then. Um, I might be putting 15 or 20 in there just to be safe. Then we're going to use it all. Um, it would just roll over. That's what I was saying. Just yeah. make it 15. And I, yeah. I would like to see more money in that because I'm, I'm, I'm sure the facilitator could eat up that 10 or 15 real quick. So I would, I would be, and, and like I said, if we don't use it, it, it just sits there and it, it's for the for whenever it goes and roll it back over to the, to the general fund or, the, or wherever it takes. So where, what do you want to see it at? I would, I would be more comfortable with probably 35. Wow. Thousand? I mean, that's a lot of money, yes. Okay. Because like I said, if that facilitator is 15,000, okay, well, well, right there. Okay, first off, if there's a facilitator who charges me 15 Gs for one day, we're going to a different facility. You said facility. for two. Well, yeah, but if we only use it for one day. Yes. You know? well, I would, I would say I'm the facilitator going, would be there for the first days. day and then our so, second day. And I know these people, that they don't work cheap. Huh? Plus you got, and we're, if it isn't there, then you put the Citizens are going to give us heck for you spending that too much money on a facility. Well, we don't have to spend all that money. It's there. No, I, I understand and that, he's gonna, no, but He's going to get the cheapest guy he can find. No, no, I'm not going to do that. Does. Here, why don't you put it at 15 or 20, and then if it's not enough, we'll come back and we'll... we'll Place hold it, and you guys can worry about that, yeah. Okay. Shopper. So, topics. Are we all, <laughs> are we all agreeable that it would be a good time to review important city documents? Yes. To go over the budget, maybe hand in, yes. to really sit down and talk to your staff one-on-one? -on -one. Yes. Okay. And on top of that, what else would council like to see at the retreat? Do you guys want a session on your own where you guys just meet and not with your staff, with your, yeah. with your I mean, I so you guys can have some one-on-one -on -one with yep. that without us present? Yep. Okay. Some things I want to say about Mr. Kiku. Well, but we I mean, put in some kind of a sound I system. I, I, I don't think we I say it all the time on Facebook. <laughs> So on there. this is a good starting point. It is. And as like I said, we'll be talking about this again. Uh, and I got location close by our way. How far do you guys want to go? Oh, I, I would I mean, give I would, it like a I would 10 mile to, radius, a 20 mile. I would radius. prefer to go just far enough where we don't have to stay. That way we don't incur yeah. the cost of hotel yeah. charges. OK, so I mean, I would you know, say Dayton Mall would probably be the furthest yeah. south I would go. The other point of these retreats is also for bonding with your staff and stuff like that. So if we do happen to go and stay somewhere, I mean, that is very common for that. Yeah, then you go to dinner and have a bond. You know, you know, don't talk about city stuff. You bond with your, and we don't get very often to do that. So just keep in mind, that's one of the, that's one of the perks of and so the reasoning is behind over, you're, you're thinking of an overnight thing. No, I hate staying. I love my bed. Say, I'm I stay in hotels and enough. And that's, be a lot of, yeah. that's the reason why a lot of stay hotels are yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. For me, we can go play putt putt for four hours after the last Mike. day, and I'm fine with that. Sir, top golf is down in Westchester. Oh. What, what if we turn around and, and yeah, go up to, let's say, the Catholic Church up there in their big meeting room? where we can sit and be comfortable. Now, if you're going to include the public, that's a whole nother ball game. But if it's just council, where you can bounce things off of each other, that's one thing. Well, it all has to be done in open session. So even if you have a section where it's just council and your consultant, the public can still be in that room. We won't be in that room, but everything has to be, nothing, nothing of this nature can be done in executive session. But, but to me, yeah. if, if you have it up to a place like the Catholic Church, in that meeting room, possibly we could arrange for the Catholic Church to provide lunch, uh, that type thing, and keep our costs down considerably. Yeah, I don't know if we want to ask the church to provide lunch for something we're doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I think we. And if it's uh, potluck, I'm not eating. Yeah, 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 we can have it. I, I, I think I would much rather, like Dan said, keep it within Dayton yeah. Mall. I'd rather be out of the city. I'm not saying far. Yeah, but just at least out. Yeah. To just get Dayton, it. Beaver Creek, somewhere yeah. out of the city. So yeah, you out of the city somewhere. Top golf is good. Pardon me. 
Top Golf down at Westchester, Dan had suggested. I like that. No, it's, it's, that's too it's, fine. I'm with, with whatever it was. Well, my thought said, is no farther than you're going to be bringing the department in. Well, yeah, yeah. Beaver Creek. Mm -hmm. Beaver Creek's got some nice places. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah we'll Richmond, find Richmond ain't that far. You, you, you just said no to Westchester. Do you want to go? <laughs> I'm not saying anything. Where's Westchester? I don't even know. Is that south of Westchester? <laughs> yes, it's like northern Cincinnati. Oh, I, yeah. Yeah. It's uh, 15 okay. minutes south of Dayton. Okay. All right, what else you need on this, well, Mr. Bridge? Westchester. You um, sound very good. <laughs> It's beautiful. Well, I'm not sure. I want a vacation. We got, we got a ballpark time, yeah, ballpark yeah. budget. I'm just going to run with that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, the, so that's all right. Is there a third night now, sir? No. No, I don't, I don't either. either. All right, moving on to. Heck, this is it. Wait for Dale. Oh, he did. Wow. Oh, he oh, just got gabbled. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Moving on to the cemetery. <laughs> we'll wait for Dale. Sure. We good? I think we're done. Cemetery? Sold. Cemetery. <laughs> no, so I'll just give you a little bit of background from uh, before we get into some, just minor details. So uh, the municipality, villages, townships cannot sell a cemetery. However, they can sell land that would not be usable as for burial sites. We don't have that, so no, we cannot sell a cemetery. Um, and besides, if you can, you have to be able to purchase other land prior to the sale of that land. So it's just out of the question. As far as sale, because if if you did sell it to a private company, it comes right back to you in a default. So it's your ears forever. Um, however, uh, the municipality is home rule by the constitution to legislate how that cemetery runs, i.e., fees and various aspects about it. And what was brought up was headstones. Uh, we cannot do anything with the headstones, as in. Um, your, as in your ordinances with a cemetery, it's been allowed for any platted land that we've always done. So down the road, we still have, I think, five acres that is not fully platted yet. That could potentially be a um, stoneless or monumentless property piece. Like Glen Haven. Like Glen Haven. So everything we have currently now, the responsibility is on the owner. And a deed is not owning the land. They do not own the land. The city will always own the land. They own the rights for a burial site. So that headstone from 1890, whatever, and it, it's doing what, that's all based on the, the um, not ancestors, bad word. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of the uh, next to kin. So if someone's not around, they're responsible for that. Now we have in the past went out and straightened them up. If we've seen one lean in so it doesn't fall, we went in and tried to straighten a few up. So cannot do anything with headstones, but however, we can legislate later on to have a plotted area before we go out and survey it to be a stoneless or monumentless type uh, facility. Um, also, we are in an endowment cemetery, which we have perpetual care, which means we're required at minimum to have 10% of every grave sales going to perpetual care. It's in your budget, and that's just used for when the cemetery is full and at capacity and we're done that that perpetual care will be the funds used to maintain that cemetery um, outside of any normal you know general fund or anything like that because you won't be uh, bringing any revenues from sales um, so that is out now as far as uh, standards like again we are home rule so we can we can set a lot of standards uh, the ORC covers a lot 25 pages of various things of uh, when flowers go, you know, that type of thing. You've got to pull different decorations up. We can do a lot with home rule and changing that, but that's typically not an issue. Uh, the other sh sheet that I gave you is from the Department of Commerce. They are uh, the ones who do the cemetery minimum maintenance guidelines. And if you go down to grounds and structures, which is your second um, area, first bullet point, Cut grass and trim around markers and or monuments once per month during the growing season. So we easily um, uh, meet that um, standard, but that is uh, basically the grounds and structures and what we're supposed to do, but that's always the big one that everybody talks about. I have been in front of the Ohio uh, Cemetery Dispute Resolution Board before and have won, have I been twice? I think but I've won them, not really won them, but the complaint filed against us was invalid. Uh, as a matter of fact, the president was from Glen Haven, and they're from around the old state of Ohio, and said, do you have commercial mowers? Do you have weeds? Do you use all the things or tools that are out there to keep the cemetery going? And we said, yes, here's an aerial. 
And basically because some of the old platted cemetery, it was just uh, spitballed, it was thrown down, nothing's lined up, of course, everything since really Greg's been doing it is on straight foundations, a mower goes up one side and down the other. There's no mowing in between stones. We run full concrete uh, footers underneath the stone. So um, we've simplified some stuff like that to help us out. <clears throat> they understood. So we have not been in violation of any previous uh, you know, uh, issues with that. Um, so yeah, in the cemeteries, there's not much to it, you know, as far as uh, rules, laws uh, that we have. The headstones was the biggest one because you, uh, as council was brought up before. Um, the next sheet that I had given you is uh, just from around the area of Medway Cemetery, Maple Hill Cemetery, Forest Hill Cemetery, and Riverside. Those are all uh, government run cemetery, so we kind of try to base our uh, fees for various open and closing, cremations, graves, foundations. Um, we are right in there. The one, if you see on the second page, I highlighted Glen Haven. That is a commercial. That is a public, you know, privately owned. And if you look at their fees, they're double of what, you know, we, we charge. And by the ORC and uh, various uh, governing the laws, is you are, you know, I lost my page, it's basically charge enough to take care, but not to embellish or make things, you know, you're, we're not here for a profit, in other words, as a government agency in the cemetery. So if our cemetery was sitting with a million dollars right now, that would not be following the, the law as written for how we're supposed to maintain a, a cemetery. Do we have a sheet of our fees? So we can compare it? It is right, uh, it is in the um, cemetery ordinances on the page four of seven and um, five of seven under your ordinances. I printed them out. Oh, you, oh, you, oh I, I, I give everybody oh, you a printed. Um, you got some. I don't think I got them. Oh, I don't have one. I got one. I think you gave it out, buddy. Thank you. you. You gave it to somebody else, Alex. <coughs> I got two cemetery price reviews. Oh. Here, I can read them for the reference so everyone sees them. Oh, I thought, okay. My, my apologies. I thought that was my other uh, copy I handed out. No, I've done it millions of times. They're good with it. All right, so. You, you want me to read the, what do you want to read this for? for? So yeah. basically, our fees, um, Our interment, which is your opening and closing, Monday through Friday is 800 bucks. Uh, Saturday is 1100. Sunday and holiday is 1300. So they're kind of right in line with uh, ours is 800. Some of the cemeteries is 750 through eight, 700 through nine, uh, 700 through nine, 700, 650. So we're we're pretty close. Uh, cremation. Is, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Is there any differentiation between resident and non-resident on those fees or not? Uh, negative. Everybody pays the same to be uh, buried at, at our cemetery. Okay. Um, sure. You know, but yeah, they're 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 very close. Is there any other ones that you want me to uh, read? Okay. Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm sorry. So our graves are, oh, I'm sorry, you're right, on graves, so the opening and closing, the actual digging part, we don't charge a resident, non-resident, but however, you're right. grave, resident is 600, non-resident is 650, so in an infant grave is the same price, resident, non-resident, as $150, and that is in the infant section, and if it's an infant grave, regular section, it's $600 resident, 650 non-resident. So if you bury an infant in the infant only area, it's the same price for both. And then foundations, we charge 70 cents per square inch and lawn markers without cement is $175. And government markers are 150. And if you would like to disinter someone uh, that is a two thousand dollar fee to dig uh, that person back up. Is that? Uh, I don't see that on this other sheet here that you gave us for just a moment. Oh, on some of the other cemeteries, yeah. some may or may not put it out there. Um, 
It's whatever they respond with. Uh, let's see. I'm sure they're all uh, fairly up there because it's, it's not encouraged. And if the city were to... takes a court order, too. What's that? takes a court order, too. Sure. Um, so, and then, let me make sure I covered all my things before I get to the um, maintenance of it. Contracting standards, fees. So then, under the contract, and we had, we had looked at, um, you know, how long does it take, uh, you know, for maintenance and what we do during the week. So we have our sem uh, public works superintendent, and we have a seasonal. Uh, we have 25 acres of ground with 20 acres that are plotted. Now, not all that 20 acres has stones on it yet. It's, it's, that, it's that far area before we get to a five acre piece that's kind of behind RD Holder. Um, so basically mowing time. With two people, anywhere, you know, depends on if it's growing fast or if it's not, it can take four to five days, which is 32 to 40 hours uh, for two people to mow the cemetery. Um, we use rear discharge mowers for obvious reasons. We don't want to blow grass all over the stones. Um, and that is the second reason, as I said, they're scattered. So you have to go buy a stone, turn a corner in, go back around. And it's, you're, you're starting stopping all the time. Um, this, does, this does not include weed eating. Um, so basically, I took uh, the two employees and took the 32 to 40 hours and took their wages and benefits and it's uh, between $2,194 and $2,742 uh, per cut. You know, so we're averaging a whole cemetery in about a week and a half with the other duties of grave sales, opening and closing, reseeding, things like that. Uh, weed eating, uh, they usually take about two to three hours about every day. Uh, when, when they can to weed eat and they just work the whole way through the cemetery. It, it works out to be about four days or 32 hours for two employees to weed eat the cemetery one round. So that's about $2,194 to weed eat the cemetery. So I've gotten one tentative contract price back with $1,800 per cut with weed eating being an additional $1,300 per trim. That'd be trimming every stone that's out there um, and trimming, you know, various parts of it. But, you know, we don't, uh, I, I, we don't trim every week. Obviously we can, we just don't have the personnel. So we're, we're usually trimming about every two, two weeks till a month is what, you know, it'll, it'll get taken down, especially during slow season, we don't have an issue. Late summer, when we get the buckhorn growing, that's the biggest thing. Grass will be at three, four inches. The buckhorn sitting at 12. Uh, we have tried to spray but it's difficult even with a boom sprayer we brought someone in i think a long time ago to try and get over well there's stones tall enough that even they can't go over so um those have been some things that we we have tried so that is kind of what we do basically on mowing and what it kind of would cost to contract out or maybe do a hybrid if we needed a little assistance you know mowing half the cemetery and we do the other half to be able to keep it you know, if we want to look, have it look a little bit more or a little bit better than what it does, there's always that option. We can make it pristine. I think it looks good, but it's not, you know, we can't make it pristine so at our level. The the price you got from the contract, that's once a week mowing and weed eating? It, it's just per cut. So if the grass is slow, it could be every week and a half. If the grass is fast, that could be twice a week. Okay. And we cut it, what, once a month or once every... Uh, no, we, we cut it. Uh, so when we start like, see Section A on Monday, we're about to Section A back on Tuesday or Wednesday. So we're about nine days, about nine, ten days. So if you go off the low end of your estimate per weed eating and mowing, you're looking at around $4,400 just in cost as far as personnel mm. and wear and tear on machinery and fuel maintenance. So, and then the cost to have them do it's just, you know, it's a tad under. Four thousand. So, but then that would free up with that part timer up. and right. to mow the rest. So of you're saving. Yeah. So it's a savings either way. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, there's a little bit. Our what our problem is, and I was going to bring up Woodland Cemetery. Um, they had contracted out uh, both mowing and weed eating. They have brought back mowing, and the big reason was is damage to foundations, damage oh, to yeah. stones. 
uh, blowing grass. Uh, the care taken by a contractor is usually not as good. And yeah, you could go out to them and say, hey, I need you to do it better, better, better. The next thing you know, they're just going to walk away. Yeah. Um, so they did bring that back in. However, the weed eating is still done by the contractor. It's kind of hard to mess up weed whacking. Right. Um, so if anything, if anything so helps us, it's, it's weed whacking the cemetery, and we still possibly maintain the mowing. So aren't you, are you going to try that? You're going to try that next spring? Yeah, we're definitely looking at something to see if some if a change in your mind makes sense when it actually happens out on the grass. Yeah. When someone actually goes out and mows, because the contractor's been out there, drove through the cemetery, but until you mow the cemetery, it, it's it's a different story. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's like driving through a pinball machine. Yeah. So, so you're suggesting we do the weed eating and you, it's a, it's my, you keep doing the mowing? It's my initial thought to take the weed eating off mm -hmm. and start with that because that's not too harmful. Mm -hmm. And maybe, you know, next spring, it's just, it's just thoughts. I just started talking with Greg and uh, you know, bringing this up with Randy to just get, you know, what is a, what is a good start to try and help out with that? I like well, it. Mike. Sir. Howie, you mentioned that we've got quite a few stones that are out of line. Okay, have you got a number on the amount of stones that... Uh, the whole first section from the 1800s all the way through the 1950s or 60s, I think are all, almost all of them. Okay. Next question. Have you noticed an increase in the cremations versus burial? I, I do not know that. That's something we can look up in our um, sales. All right. The reason I'm asking, uh, there is a company out of, well, Cincinnati has been putting up, and I will call them for want of a better term, the mausoleum type mm. structure that is dedicated strictly to cremations. This looks like a building mm -hmm. with shelves in there, right. put the box in there. It's saving considerably on the amount of ground that they're using for burials. Cremations, as far as I know, are pretty much catching up with burials and it's about 50-50 right now. The ideal situation at that point, if we were to put such a structure in there, we would probably be able to, in, how do I say, increase our income, but save on our ground space. And I can look into that and find out how we as a home rule can, I can do a law to say, when if you cremate and come to New Carlisle, you must go in the mausoleum, you know, that type of thing. If we can do that, and, you know, I'll look at I that. can get you that company's name out of Cincinnati. I, I looked it up the other day. And how much does it cost to build a mausoleum? How many, how many cremations can you fit in one? Let's just say it's a I'm five, six hundred thousand dollar build. I don't think it would cost that. Yeah, I don't know because it's usually cement. I mean, you don't know. There's a lot that goes into it. It's very thick cement. You so. say put three to five hundred cremation things up. I don't know. Yeah, I'm no cemetery expert. Tell you about like this, by like this. Right, but you got to build the structure, and you're going to have that much. You guys, there's going to be thick. So I'm just what I'm trying to get yeah, at. I think it's sealed with glass or something. What's your cost to build it versus how much you got to charge to put the people in there for you to even make it back? Because once it's full, it's not making any money. Mm -hmm. so that's what I'm getting. At. Right. So it's, it's going to be financially beneficial for us to do that. He's got a good point because I tell you this: when we were planning, rest your rest in peace, a year ago Wednesday, by the way, mom's death, the funeral director said most people just don't even do open casket funerals anymore. They're already cremated, you don't see the body, and that's the way that, and that's the trend people are going nowadays, just cremation and get it done with. So I think he's on the right path, but we have to look at our return on investment versus how much it's gonna cost to build that building versus how much we can actually put into it before it stops making this money. But on a, uh, that makes sense. To, I think uh, this would be something that Trussell Chapman could probably oh, sure. give you mm -hmm. some of their numbers real quick. No, I could get with him because do you want a granite mausoleum? You know, I don't, that's the only thing I've ever seen is gra yeah. you know, yeah. grand I'm mausoleums. Yeah. I've never seen a yeah. whole building as a mausoleum. So. <laughs> well, the old <laughs> mausoleums <laughs> were a mammoth place. Dad. Yeah. These newer things are Blue probably <laughs> yay high. Yeah. And they've got boxes all the way around. You're right, you're right. I remember seeing those. They're not like a full structure building, right. just open walls per se. 
Yeah, you're right. In my head, I was thinking about building. That's it, about that. mm -hmm. But yep. to me, it, it makes sense that we start investigating this to see what we can do in order mm -hmm. to cut our costs. Not a week to get sick. Hmm? It's just not a good week to get sick. I'll get, I know. Yeah. Uh, get you something. Mr. Kitko, have, if we have uh, another company mm -hmm. come in and do the trimming, okay. I'm sorry. If we have another company come in and do the trimming, does the union have anything to say about that? I've been, work? I've been working with the union, and uh, basically their goal is no job loss, in which there's plenty of work. Right. So, you know, yeah, I mean, so they, we're already working on some other grass cutting things that would be very similar to the cemetery that they're very okay with. Okay. I, I mean, I just, yeah, yeah, they're, they're very receptive to, okay. you know, no one likes to sit on a mower for eight hours every day, all day. I mean, it's... Depends on how good the season. It sounds it sounds good. Let me tell you, I mowed commercial for a little while. It's not it's fun in the very beginning, but it gets kind of. Yeah. Are we done? Are we wrapping this up? Yes. I yes. got one quick question. Do you know how many graves we dig a year? Good question. I have to get with uh, Greg, but I want to say. Where we? Yeah. yeah, I don't even want. I don't even want to put a number on. It could be fifty a year, maybe a hundred a year or less. So for the budget, and you guys will see before we go, one more food of thought for you guys to take. We, the cemetery is not doing well. So usually the general fund has to provide a transfer. We didn't want to do that this year. So we actually took the wages that usually pay one of our employees out of that for the cemetery to be in the black. And this is a conservative number with how we do our budgeting. But right now, 2023, we are projected to have $8,561 in that fund. And that is with removing the wages out of it. So what we have to look at at the time is these cemetery rates that you guys approve through council and every year that we have to raise them. Um, what can we do in addition to make that not so one spend on a transfer from the general fund, but two just be that close with the fund balance. Now we'll see what it closes out at. It's projected to close with 90 at this year, um, but we'll see how that comes out because I'm with Mr. Cook. I think we're going to see a reduction based off cream and cream and cream mm -hmm. cremations. Yeah, good job, Howard. Highway. Fantastic job. And, and honestly, we've had a good year. Obviously, people have to die for the good years, and then you know we've had a bad year, but we've seen them both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. Anything else? Folders, coffee, John. Second. Oh, well, well, well. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, well, well. second by Mr. Motion Mr. is second. You know, oh, way way too fast for me. Second. Motion by Eggleston, second by Mr. Lindsay to adjourn. How oh, was a baby fly? No. Uh, Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Uh, Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Yeah. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. We are adjourned. We are adjourned. Oh.